Hi everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me for another video. Back in July of 2018, I released a video on my exfoliating coffee buff bar, which was a solid body butter that could be used in the shower and had exfoliating bits in it. Along with that video, I also offered a starting point formula so that you could customise it to be into a product that you wanted. Now since releasing that video and starting point formula, I have had a lot of questions and concerns and today I am here to do a remake of that buff bar and also answer some of those questions and concerns. Now the biggest concern people had about the bar was about how solid it was and it just didn't look as solid as mine or wasn't setting up. Now after a lot of questioning, I discovered that people were either skimping or completely leaving out the cocoa butter. The cocoa butter is integral to the recipe because it is one of the very few butters which is completely solid and rock hard at room temperature. Most of the other butters out there, although they take on solid form at room temperature, they are still really soft to touch and will melt on skin contact even on a cool day. It is because of those low melt temperatures of all of those other butters that the cocoa butter needs to be the main portion of your hard butters. The only way to really lower the amount of cocoa butter that you would use would be to increase something like stearic acid or beeswax in the formula, but this could actually result in having a really draggy feel of the bar when you're using it. So I would much rather just um, go all out and include lots of cocoa butter. Now keeping in mind those really low melting points of the butters, you would then need to keep in mind whether or not this product needs to be a seasonal one. Just as you wouldn't probably sell a pot of pure body butter in the middle of summer, these bars are probably also not suitable to sell in summer in a majority of countries around the world. I was only selling my exfoliating coffee bars during late autumn, all through winter and then the beginning of spring, but as soon as our days started to hit over that 30 degrees Celsius during the day, I had to stop selling them because the general daytime heat, whether it be at markets or during the shipping process, were going to destroy the integrity of the bar. The other thing I got asked a lot was whether or not you could add in an emulsifying wax and if so, how much? That was the really good thing about offering you a starting point formula was that you could take that information and you could add in any other ingredients that you wanted to in combinations and change it into a product of your own. By adding in the emulsifying wax, it changes it from being a solid body butter into a solid lotion bar. How much is dependent upon the emulsifying wax that you use and what your manufacturer has as guidelines for that particular emulsifying wax. Now the other advantage to adding in the emulsifying wax is that it does help with how solid the bar comes out. So that helps with the concerns about it being too soft. So today I am back to do a remake of the exfoliating coffee buff bar, but this time I'm adding in the emulsifying wax and changing it into an exfoliating lotion bar. To add in the emulsifying wax, because as mentioned this helps to harden the bar, I decided to reduce the amount of butters that I was adding in and replace it with the emulsifying wax. Now as I did with the original video, I have left that starting point formula down in the description box below, but this time I have included the emulsifying wax. But you can still change up the butters and the exfoliants that you are using to make this into your own custom product. Now please note this is a formula that I've included down below so it is in percentages and I will not be changing it into a recipe using grams and ounces. This is because I have this very strong belief that if you are going to be working and creating bath and body products you really do need to know how to work in percentages to know whether or not recipes that you have found out there on the internet are complete and more importantly safe. I have seen recipes out there that are offered in grams and when I convert them into percentages they are definitely not safe because certain ingredients have been used at higher percentages than what are actually recommended for use. So I will always offer my recipes in percentages so you can see that they are complete and follow in with guidelines. So with all of that talking put to one side, let's get to making our exfoliating lotion bar and we are going to do a coffee buff one. Let's go. 
Okay, so on my um, stove top here, I have a saucepan of some water, which I'm just bringing up to boil so we can make a bain marine system. I like to melt oils and butters in a bain marie system so that I don't overheat them. So I've got another saucepan here and I'm gonna start by putting in some cocoa butter. Now, when I did this recipe the last time, a lot of people wrote to me saying, we used exactly the same that you did. Now I did actually leave only a starting point recipe and I didn't tell people exactly what I had put in because part of the fun of creating bath and body products is coming up with your own combination of oils and butters. When I went back to people asking, because um, they were saying it was too soft, I actually discovered that most people were putting more things like shea and mango and those softer butters. Cocoa butter is a nice hard butter, so the more of it you use, the more solid that your um, bar will end up being. If you put more, say, shea butter, mango butter, um, coconut butter, any of those softer butters, this bar is going to be soft and won't set up nice and solid. So you do need to use a majority of cocoa butter. The last time I made my coffee buff bars, I used beeswax as my sort of hardening agent and I had a lot of people ask me if they could use something other than beeswax. Your other alternative is some steric acid. So I'm going to put my steric acid in here and then the other thing I got asked a lot for was whether or not you could add in some emulsifying wax. So I had a little bit of a play with this recipe and because it is oils and butters and it's coming into contact with water, there is no reason why you can't add the emulsifying wax in. And what this will do is, is help those butters to emulsify with the water and it will actually wash off the body a lot easier and quicker. With regards to how much you would add in, I'll just turn that down a little bit, um, is really dependent upon your guidelines of what you can um, add in with your emulsifying wax. Now I use a vegetable based emulsifying wax and it um, says in there it's about 4% for a lotion and up to 8% for body butters and balms. I'm actually going to stick at about 4% on this one because I have added in that steric acid and I don't want this to become too hard and too draggy on the skin. So we're going to get my emulsifying wax in and then I'm going to, that's perfect, I'm going to pop this onto my double boiler and let this melt down. Okay, so this has now actually melted down and what I'm going to now do is add in my shea butter, which I have already weighed out. The reason I like to add my shea butter afterwards is because I found that when you um, melt shea butter and then cool it down really quickly, it ends up going really grainy. So all I'm going to do, I'm actually going to turn my stove top off because there'll be enough heat in that water if I need it. But I'm just going to pop my shea butter in and just let the warmth of those oils melt this down. Okay, so this is melting down quite nicely. If I can see that that big chunk is still actually melting down. If you find that your big chunks of um, shea have stopped or really reduced in how quickly that they're melting down just pop them back on to that warm water just to warm it up just a little bit but what i was hoping as well by putting that shea butter in um, once we got to temperature this brought it down quite quickly to about 60 degrees celsius what i want this to do is to fully melt that shea butter down i want it to come down to about 40 degrees and then we can start adding in some of our other bits all right, so this has dropped down to about 52 degrees Celsius, and I know that's still not down at that 40 that I said I needed to add in my fragrance and other bits and pieces. But what I am gonna do is add in my exfoliants, so that will really help reduce the temperature of this. Now you can add whatever exfoliants that you want into it. Last time I put in some ground coffee, some almond meal and some um, black beans. This time I'm going to add in the coffee and the almond meal and I've also got some rice flour as well. So I'm going to pop my rice flour in there and then I am going to add in my coffee because I am making mine into a coffee buff bar. But honestly, if you don't want to make it into a coffee one, you don't have to. You can add anything you want and call it whatever you want to as well. So let's get my coffee in. 
coffee is quite light, so we'll need quite a few spoonfuls of this one. And then the other exfoliant I'm putting in is the almond meal. Now, if you want to avoid the almond meal because of nut allergies, there are so many other things that you could think about putting into this. You could maybe use some polenta. You could use things like, oh, I don't know, apricot kernel powder. There is just so much that you can change up in this recipe to really make it your own. So I've almost got oh, just a little bit too much. Take some off the top and that is perfect. And already by adding that in, this has actually dropped down to about 43 degrees Celsius. So I'm almost right then to start adding in things like my fragrance. And I've got a couple of extracts and preservative. Okay, so this is now dropped under 40 degrees Celsius. It's sitting at about 37, 38. So now I can add in some of my other extracts. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in some green coffee seed extract. Now, although this is um, water soluble, not oil, it can be used in emulsions. So that means when it goes into the shower with that emulsifying wax, I will end up with um, it actually emulsifying into the mix. So we'll get, right, so I'll give that a bit of a stir. I am going to add in my fragrance oil and I have a coffee based one here just to really bring out the smell of that um, ground coffee. And oh, come on, squeeze, squeeze. That's it. I have just enough, so I'll have to order some more of that one. Now I was told many many years ago if ever you add ground coffee into something and you kind of get that coffee smell stuck on your skin the best thing to do is to also include a little bit of orange essential oil so I'm going to add some of that in there this is a sweet orange okay so that's our orange essential oil in and I'm now just going to give that a little bit of a stir to incorporate all of that in there now that that is all stirred in and is smelling really good, it's time for one last thing, and that is my preservative. Now, I often get asked why I put preservative into products that I have not got any water in. The reason being with this particular product is that this one is going to go in the shower and will more than likely live in the shower, which is a water environment, and therefore it's going to come into contact with water. So I like to make sure I put a preservative into anything that comes into contact with water to keep it nice and safe for my customers. Now when choosing your preservative to go in what is known as an anhydrous product, you need to make sure that your preservative is suitable for such a product. So for example, something like Liquid Germal, product, um, Liquid Germal Plus is actually not oil soluble, so would therefore not be suitable for this. But something like Pheno um, Serve, which is oil soluble, could be used in here. I like to use the Nippergard range of preservatives and there's two different ones. There's an oil based one and a water based one and I'm using the oil based preservative which is Nippergard SCV. Now that I've got all of that incorporated into there it's time to start pouring into the mould. The mould that I'm using today is this round silicone mould which I got from off Aussie Soap Supplies and I've got enough mixture in my pan here to fill up seven cavities plus I have some left over that I can make some samples to send out to my customers. Now I've popped it onto a tray and onto my scales so I can make sure that each of these cavities is at the correct weight and then once I've finished pouring them I'm going to pop them into the fridge just to help set them up a little bit quicker. So I'm going to start just over here. Now I'm pouring this and then it's about 33 degrees Celsius and by pouring at such a low temperature it means that all of those lovely exfoliants that are in there are going to actually suspend themselves rather than all sink to the bottom of the bar which will make it for a much nicer experience in the shower. Alright, 
So now that those are all poured, I'm going to go and pop this into the fridge. Now some people did ask me the last time I did them if they could just leave them out on the side and of course you can, they're just going to take a lot longer to set up and you also need to be very aware of what your actual room temperature is. I'm okay at the moment, we're sitting at a room temperature of about 18 degrees so they will actually set up quite nicely for me overnight but if you're sitting at a room temperature of about 27 degrees because of all those butters you're going to find that they'll take a while to set up. So I just like to pop them in the fridge so that I can get them wrapped and packed and ready to go on the shelves quickly. And with just what I've got left over, I have this other handy little mould. I'm just going to pour the rest of it into these cubes and then I will end up slicing these up for some samples. So once these have set up, I will come back and show you how I am going to wrap and package my coffee buff bars. So it's been a few hours and these are nicely set up so all I'm going to do is just push from the bottom and pop these little lotion bars straight out of the container and that is what our coffee bar now looks like. So I'll get all of these out and then we'll move on to actually packaging these ones up. So for my exfoliating lotion bar, I want some really simple environmentally friendly packaging. So what I have here is a piece of greaseproof paper which I've cut into a square. I'm going to pop my little bar into the centre and then I'm going to start pulling my paper up into the centre of this bar. And it just makes for a really nice edge around the bar. The reason I'm wrapping it in the greaseproof paper is to stop the oils from marking the outer packaging that I'm going to be using just so it looks nice while it's sitting on its shelf. So now that I've got that wrapped around all I have here is a coffee filter basket and you can get, find these on Amazon, eBay, you can probably even find them in your local grocery store as well. You need to make sure that you get the basket ones so that they've got the nice flat bottom if you're going to be using coffee filters. So again I've placed that into the centre, I've pulled one piece of my um, coffee filter paper over and then just working around I'm just going to pull it up and relatively tight you don't want to pull too tight because you will rip the paper but you want to pull it tight enough that it creates this really pretty pleated pattern on the outside of the bar so I'm just going to keep pulling that up towards the center until it's all in and then I have my sheet of labels over the back of it I'm going to put my label which has my ingredients listed it also has um, how to use it and all the other details that I need to include when living here in Australia. On the front here, I'm going to put on the label which says exactly what it is, its weight and all of my business details. And that is what our exfoliating lotion um, bar coffee buff actually looks like. So I'm going to get the rest of these ones wrapped up and then I'll bring you back and give you a quick demonstration of how to use them. So it's very simple to use this exfoliating lotion bar. Usually I would have the whole piece in the shower and what I tell my customers to do is to get into the shower and get your skin wet. And it's best if you like to have a warm shower so it warms your actual skin up as well. And then all I do is I rub that coffee buff bar all over where I want it to go. So it can be used all over the body to exfoliate. This is also really good. I usually have some in here if I've been working with um, ingredients that leave that sort of smell behind. I find, or if I'm in the kitchen with some um, garlic, I tend to find that this is a really good scrub to get rid of those smells. So I just keep rubbing it over until I'm happy with how much it's exfoliated. You will actually see that the oils will go this really creamy colour and that is the emulsifying wax which is working with the um, water to become a lotion. And then all I do is I jump back under the shower and I rinse it off with warm water. Now I say to come out from under the water because the shea butter and the cocoa butter and any other butters that you use will melt away under warm water and I like a really really hot shower so if I used my um, my bar under the hot water you, I would actually find that it would disappear very very quickly so I hope you've enjoyed watching how I make our all-new exfoliating lotion bar and in particular the coffee buff bar 
Some other ideas I have which I'm going to turn these into is to maybe do a tea one which will have some black tea leaves through as exfoliants and also to do an oatmeal one where I grind some actual oatmeal up, not colloidal oats because it's a little bit too fine for an exfoliant but there are a couple of other ideas that you could do. The possibilities are absolutely endless with what exfoliants you could use. I hope I was able to answer any of the questions and concerns you guys have had since that original video. If you did enjoy watching me make this one, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video, I hope you have a great week and I will see you then. Bye. <laughs>